This is Al Brooks, and this is my price action trading course. This module has to do with wedges. Again, most reversal patterns are trading ranges, and I'm working through the list of common reversal patterns, and the current module has to do with wedges. An ideal wedge has a wedge shape, a, a channel with convergent lines and it can be sloped up for a top, it can be sloped down for a bottom. The minimum requirement is three pushes within a channel, and if it's sloped up or down, you call it a wedge. If it's mostly sideways, a three push pattern, you call it a triangle. It can be contracting, it can be expanding. Whenever you have a rising wedge, you have a potential top. You're looking for a failed breakout of the top of the wedge and then a reversal down preferably with a strong bear reversal bar, and that would be a reasonably good signal bar. An ideal wedge bottom, you'd have a falling uh, wedge, and you'd have a, a little breakout below, and then a strong reversal up um, with a strong bull reversal bar for the buy signal bar. Here's an example of a um, wedge. You have three pushes down. You have a bear breakout below the bottom of the wedge, and then a couple of bars later, you have a one bar final flag and then a pretty good looking bull bar closing near its high. That's a reasonable buy setup for um, at least two legs up, um, 10 bars, two legs up. Again, it has a wedge shape, a convergent shape. A lot of wedges don't really have wedge shapes and that's not important. Um, a lot of times it's just a simple three push pattern. The closer it is to the ideal, the more reliable the trade would be. Most wedges are not perfect, and any three push pattern qualifies. Many spike and channel patterns end in a wedge. The channel oftentimes has three pushes. For example, here's a very strong bull spike and a channel, and there are three pushes in the channel. And the market broke out of the top of the channel and then formed a two bar reversal, and then an IOI pattern. Uh, an inside bar, outside bar, inside bar. So that's a reasonably good um, sell setup. At the bottom, we have three pushes down, not wedge shaped at all, but functionally it's the same concept as a wedge. So uh, once you start get a, getting a parabolic curve, you have uh, connect these two lines and then you connect these two points, you get a steeper trend. Um, you know, that's uh, a climactic move and I call it a parabolic wedge. Even though it's not a wedge shape, it's a three push pattern and it's becoming parabolic. So it's a climax and uh, can lead to a potential reversal. One bar final flag. A reversal bar has a bare body, but it has a um, close above the midpoint. So it's a, a reasonable signal bar for a test up to the minimum, um, to the minimum target of the moving average and probably at least um, 10 bars, two legs up. By the way, we have a bear trend. I did not draw the channel uh, in the trend line. We have a strong breakout above the trend line, and then we have a higher low. So this right here is a higher low major trend reversal. <coughs> Wedges and triangles are the same thing. It's the same process. It's three pushes. Here, horizontal, three pushes up. It's a triangle. Here, three pushes down. One, two, and then three, uh, triangle, horizontal. Uh, here, three pushes down, one, two, three. Also three pushes up. It doesn't, the three pushes up can come before the pushes down, the pushes down can come before the pushes up. It doesn't matter. As long as there are three pushes, uh, as soon as you see three pushes um, in a trading range, um, I treat it like a triangle, whether or not it has a triangle shape. For example, uh, leg two here fell below leg one, and this does not have a triangle shape but functionally it's the same price action as a triangle and I would treat it as a, pri uh, as a triangle. Breakout mode, it can break out in either direction. Here, same chart and um, there was a triangle here but here you can draw a three push pattern and it's a wedge lower high major trend reversal. You have a bull trend, a trend line break, I don't have the trend line drawn, a test below the moving average with a lot of selling pressure and then we pushed up three times. We broke above the top of the channel, and then we, we reversed down in a two-bar 
reversal. So traders will, will short one bar, one tick below the low of that bear bar, looking for a lower high major trend reversal. It does not matter that after this first push up, we got a new low. That that's very common in wedge patterns. Okay, we have a failed breakout above a double top. So we have a double top here and here. Double tops are rarely exact. And then here we broke above the top of um, the pattern and we reversed down in a bear reversal bar. Uh, it's a three push pattern. Functionally, it's the same as a wedge. I could have drawn a trend line below and I could have called it a triangle. But again, it's the same process. Three pushes, a failed breakout, and then a reversal. Here, three more pushes. We have a double top and a breakout, and it failed on the next bar. Functionally, the same as a wedge. So we have a double top, a bull breakout that failed. Uh, it's the same process as a wedge, and it's a reasonable short. Again, failed breakouts of double tops and bottoms. Um, not a wedge shape, but the same process, and you treat it the same. I talked about this one a moment ago. Here's another one, a double top, a bull breakout, a failed breakout bar, and a trend down. A double bottom, a small double bottom, a strong bear breakout, a two bar reversal, or a bull inside bar. You can call it either one. So the third push down here, and a reversal up. Wedges are channels. Anything contained within two lines is a channel. It doesn't matter if the lines are converging, if they're parallel or diverging. And like all channels, usually the market will evolve into a trading range. And usually the market breaks out in the opposite direction of the channel. So a wedge, if it's an upward wedge, it usually has a bear breakout. And the upward wedge, upward channel, usually functions as a bear flag, even if it's in a bull trend. If you have a downward wedge, it usually behaves like a bull flag and has a bull breakout. About 25% of times, the wedge reversal fails and the breakout occurs in the wrong direction. So in other words, you can have a bull wedge and then a successful bull breakout leading to a new leg up and an accelerated bull. You can have a bear trend and then a wedge bottom and instead of breaking to the upside, it can break to the downside and lead to uh, an even stronger bear trend. In general, whenever the market follows the lower probability path, you should expect an accelerated trend, a fast breakout, a measured move, and two legs. So a wedge bottom is more likely to break out of the top, right? So it's less likely to break out of the bottom. If you get the successful downside breakout, you should expect two legs down and a measured move, and it probably will be pretty fast. It'll be fast because traders were expecting the upside breakout, and everyone's positioned for the upside breakout. So for an example, let's say you have a wedge bottom, and instead of reversing up, it, it breaks to the downside. You should look to a measured move down based on the height of the wedge, and the move will probably have two legs. It might have more, but it usually has at least two legs. And why does it um, move so fast? Because the bulls were buying as the wedge was forming. And if it falls below the wedge, that's their stop. So the bulls will sell out of longs. And the bears will short um, the, the breakout, and they'll short any pullback. So the bears are shorting, and the bulls are selling. So everybody's selling, and the market will move down pretty quickly. Once the market reaches the measured move down, the bears will buy back their shorts to take profits, and the bulls will begin buying again, looking for a two-legged move up. So for example, here's a bear trend and a wedge bottom with a decent bull inside bar for the signal bar. It tried to break out of the top, and now we have an IOI pattern, an inside bar, outside bar, inside bar with a bear body. The bulls who are long in here will get they'll exit below this uh, bottom of the wedge, the bottom of this outside bar. Bears will look at this and say, huh, this should go up. If it goes down, it probably will go down at least two legs and at least for a measured move based on the height of the wedge. Here's the top of the wedge. Here's the bottom of the wedge. Here's a measured move down. So bears will short exactly where the bulls are exiting. Some bulls will reverse. Most don't like to reverse, and they'll simply get out. So the bears will short here. They may short the close of this bar. 
The follow-through bar has a bear close. They might short that. They might short uh, on a stock below the low of that bar. Uh, here we have a bear microchannel, six or seven bars down without a pullback. They'll sell at the high of this bar. And then we have a bear inside bar. They'll sell below that bar until we get down to the target. And once we get down to the target, the bears will buy back to take profits, and the bulls will buy for a scalp up at least to the moving average and maybe 10 bars and two legs sideways to up. And we have a bull reversal bar here, so it's a reasonable buy. Wedges, where, what are your profit targets? Um, again, a wedge is a channel, and a wedge in a channel usually evolves into a trading range. If you have a wedge top, the first target is the bottom of the wedge. If it goes below the bottom of the wedge, the next target is a measured move down based on the height of the wedge. So for example, we have a wedge bottom, and we have an IOI buy uh, with a bull body, so a reasonable buy. You could also extend this line back here and form a larger wedge. But in any case, we have a wedge bottom, a lot of two-sided trading, might be the bottom of a trading range. And then we have an extremely strong bull breakout. First target is the top of the wedge. Uh, we did not find uh, profit taking there. We did not find selling there. In fact, we found more buying. So at this point, it's a always in bull trend, very strong. Second target is a measured move up based on the height of the wedge. And it reached that later in the day. Over here, after such a strong uh, breakout above the top of this bear trend, the market formed a higher low major trend reversal. A wedge can be re a reversal pattern. So if you have a bear trend and then a bear wedge, it can be the low of the bear and the start of a bull trend. Or it can also be a pullback. So if you have a bull trend and then a wedge pullback, that can be um, a bull flag. The wedge can be the end of a trend, or it can be the end of a leg in a trading range. So either one, the wedge can act as a reversal pattern. Wedges can be extremely steep, especially on the open. And they often become the channel in a spike and channel pattern. Remember, a gap is a, is a trend, uh, trend bar, effectively a trend bar. It's a spike, a breakout. So we have a gap up for the, the spike. And then we have a channel with three pushes up, and we have a bear signal bar. Um, and since it's occurring in the open, it's probably a reasonable short. I don't have it drawn in, but it looks like it's probably around a measured move up based on the height of this um, leg down. Wedges are rarely perfect, and I call any three push pattern a wedge, um, even if it does not have a wedge shape. So we have three pushes up here, a lot of trading range behavior, um, a reasonable short. Again, lots of trading range behavior, lots of buying pressure, very two-sided, prominent tails. Um, so probably a wedge bottom in a trading range. Um, the market continued to grow into a trading range. Three pushes here, a new high above the top of the range, and a bear reversal bar. So a reasonable short at the top of a trading range. It's a two-legged move. We have a strong move up here, and then a pullback, and then a second leg up. Second leg up had two legs and arguably even a wedge shape if you start here at one, two, three. So uh, reasonable short at the top of a trading range. Again, not really a wedge shape. Doesn't matter. If it has three pushes and the context is right, um, it should function like a wedge. <coughs> okay, instead of a wedge reversal, a wedge can be a pullback within a trend. So, for example, a bull flag can have a wedge shape. And a bull flag is a small bear trend. So you have a rally and then a pullback in a wedge shape. That's a small bear trend. And uh, it can, uh, the wedge shape could be the end of that small bear trend, resulting in a rally. A bear flag can have a wedge shape. So you can be selling off and then have a rally that has a wedge shape. Uh, uh, any rally is a small bull trend. And it, if it has a wedge shape, it could be the end of that bull trend that, and, um, become a bear flag. So for example, we have a bear trend and we have a wedge rally. So it's a, this wedge uh, rally is a wedge pullback, another wedge pullback, another wedge pullback. Every pullback is a small bull trend. 
So this small bull trend ended in a wedge top. This small bull trend ended in a wedge top. Where are the three pushes? Up here and then down, up here and then down, and then up here. So it's a wedge. This has three pushes up, up and then down, up and then down, and then up again. <coughs> again, a wedge-shaped pullback. You can argue that this is just a two-legged pullback, a high two buy, one push down, two pushes down. But a lot of times, uh, there'll be a first push befine, before the final uh, high of the um, trend. So to me, the first push down began here. And you can call it a high two, but I would call this a wedge bull flag. Here's a wedge that had four pushes down. Uh, each of these bear bars is a push down. So it's still functionally uh, a wedge. If it has four pushes, it has three. You have a double bottom and a bear breakout, so three pushes down. One, and then the double bottom is two, and the breakout is three. The failed breakout is functionally the same as a wedge bottom. And that's the end of the module on wedges. This is Al Brooks and my price action trading course, and this module has to do with double tops and bottoms. Here is a list of common reversal patterns, most of which are trading ranges. This particular module has to do with double tops and bottoms as reversal patterns. Perfect double tops and bottoms, they're rare. Triple tops that are perfect, triple bottoms that are perfect are even more rare. But close is close enough. Most double tops and double bottoms are parts of uh, major trend reversals. In fact, all major trend reversals are uh, a type of double top or double bottom, where the second top or second bottom is not exactly at the same level as the first. Bottom line, the market is trying to reverse whether or not the pattern is a perfect double top or a perfect double bottom. <coughs> Again, all major trend reversals can be thought of as double tops and bottoms. You can look at the module on major trend reversals. It does not matter that the two tops in a double top reversal are not identical. Sometimes the second high is a little higher, and you can call it a higher high or a double top, doesn't matter. If it's a little lower, you can call it a lower um, high or a double top. Again, it doesn't matter. The, the idea is the same. The market's making two attempts to go up. It doesn't matter whether the second attempt is above or at or below the first attempt. The process is the same. The same with the double bottom reversal. Usually the two bottoms are not identical. The second low can be a little bit below the first. It can be a little bit above the first, a higher low. Um, it can be perfect. It doesn't really matter. Here's an example of a double bottom. It's a not a high probability setup because we have a, a pretty tight bear microchannel. Um, we have a pullback here, but I, I would still call this a microchannel and a uh, possible one bar final flag here and then a final flag failure but the signal bar is not all that good a lot of major trend reversals have um, low probability and this is an example of a low probability setup um, initial target if you do take it would be two times your risk your entry price is one tick above that bar your stop is one tick below and two times your risk is right here and you can see a pullback developed here so a lot of traders were taking profits at around two times their initial risk. And that should always be your minimum goal when you're doing a low probability trade. Um, double tops and bottoms, they're much more common as flags, as pullbacks, than they are as reversals. For example, a double top bear flag is common in a uh, bear trend. A double top bull flag is a common pattern in a bull trend. Flags are rarely perfect, and but don't look, don't lose sight of the goal. Uh, you're looking to end, uh, enter at the end of the pullback. Sometimes, when you have a double top bear flag, um, the second um, high is a lot higher or a lot lower than the first. Uh, it doesn't matter. There's still low two sell setups. You have a push up and a second push up. The second push sometimes is much higher than the first. 
It's two legs up. You can call it an ABC. You can call it a low two cell setup in a bear trend. It's functionally the same as a double top, and you trade them the same whether or not they're perfect. Double bottom bull flag. So if you have a bull trend and a pullback and then a rally and then an another pullback, sometimes the second pullback is much lower than the first. Uh, it can be much higher than the first. Um, e in either case, it's still a high two buy setup. Um, all double bottoms are, are high two buy setups, and the process is the same. The market made two attempts to reverse. It failed, and the trend resumed. Here we have a bull trend and we have a double bottom. The second low is a little bit below the first, but you have a double bottom and a bull trend. It's a high two buy. It has a bull signal bar with a close above the moving average. That makes it a more reliable buy, a higher probability buy. Here you have a, um, a double bottom with the second low a lot lower than the first. Um, at this point, it's in a trading range, um, and it doesn't matter that the second is lower than the first. If any double bottom is a high two buy, especially on the open, you're looking for reversals up near support. We're near um, the bottom of uh, yesterday. We're near yesterday's low, so that's the support level. And we have a high two at the bottom of a trading range. It's a reasonable buy. You, then we have a bull micro channel with uh, four bull bars, two of them very big. So it's a high one buy. You can buy above that bar. Over here, we have two legs down. Um, we have two smaller legs down here. Um, this buy, I probably would not take it because the bull bar is small compared to these two bear bars. I would wait for a second entry. We have a larger two-legged pattern, one and two. So this is a high two, you know, referring to this first push down and here the second. A two-bar reversal, a uh, second bar bull bar, so a pretty good buy signal, despite the six-bar, seven-bar bear microchannel. It's also a double bottom with this bar. So you can call it a double bottom with this number one or a double bottom with this number one. Either case, any kind of a double bottom is a um, high two buy setup. So that's a buy setup. We have a higher high major trend reversal and then a lower high major trend reversal and then a bear breakout, a little pullback and then a sell off and then a second little uh, pullback. Again, not exactly at the same level as the first but it's a double top. A double top is a low two and a bear trend. So this is, you can call it a double top. You can call it a low two. If you want, you can simply call it a low one. You can say it's the first pullback in uh, a bear micro channel that has gone down for about eight bars. Um, all of those are good reasons to short. Here, the market went down on bar one and then up on bar one. And then it went down here and then up again here. So it's a double top. So this is a double top. It's a low two short. However, it's occurring late in a trend, and the trend has a series of consecutive sell climaxes here, and then 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 here. Um, so this is a potential final flag, and it turned out to be a, uh, the final flag in the bear trend leading to a reversal. Double tops and bottoms uh, uh, flags, uh, double top um, Bear flag, a double bottom bull flag, they're often parts of major trend reversals. A lower high major trend reversal often has a small double top uh, forming the lower high. So in other words, the lower high can have uh, two little pushes up in it. When you have a double bottom um, bull flag after um, uh, a potential bottom, uh, that little um, higher low can have two pushes down and form a double bottom bull flag um, for the higher low major trend reversal. So, for example, we have a bull trend, a trend line break, higher high major trend reversal below this bar. Second entry, here's the first. And then we have this small double top. So we have a higher high major trend reversal, and now we have a lower high, and the lower high is in the form of a double top. And that's a common pattern in major trend reversals. It looks pretty innocuous and, uh, and doesn't look like a possible reversal, but when you're aware of the context, um, it's a reasonably good short for 10 bars and two legs down. Here we have a bear trend, a strong breakout above the trend line and above the moving average, and we have a higher low major trend reversal, and then the market went sideways and formed a small double bottom. So we have a double bottom bull flag, and um, this is a higher low major trend reversal. We have a low, 
and now we have a higher low and the higher low came in the form of a double bottom. You can either buy here or you can buy here. Here's a double top, again, not perfect, right? A lot of double tops are not perfect. Um, potential small final flag, three pushes up, one, two, three. Uh, and a high two, a high two occurring late in a bull trend often is the final flag of the bull trend. It's a high two because we have a push down here, and then we have a second push down here. It does not matter that this bar did not go above the high of that bar. It's a two-legged correction, one, two. Also, it's a double bottom and every double bottom is a high two. So this is a high two bull flag occurring late in a bull trend and therefore a possible um, final flag. It could be the last flag in the bull trend before there's a big reversal. We broke out to the upside and the next bar we have a failure, a bear inside bar. So this is a failed uh, bull breakout and a reasonably good signal bar. And then we had this huge bear reversal bar that reversed not only the trend, it reversed the lows of all of these bars. So everyone who bought from this bar onward is now holding a losing position once this bar closed. So this bar reversed all of these closes. It closed below all of these closes. And it reversed all of these lows. So that is an extremely strong bear reversal bar. And it probably will result in a measured move down uh, at a minimum based on the height of the body. So from the open of the bar to the close of the bar, chances are we'll get at least a measured move down. Um, so this bear spike uh, probably flipped the market to always in short in the minds of traders, and it probably will have a lot of follow through. You could argue, okay, here's my, you could argue that we have a bear signal bar. You, so you sell one tick below, and you put a stop one tick above, and your first target could be two times your initial risk. So that's your initial risk from your entry price to your stop. This red line is two times that risk. And you can see a lot of traders took profits here. That's what caused this uh, rally up to the moving average. And the rally immediately failed and became a bear um, bar. Um, so you have a strong bear breakout. And the next bar is a bear bar. That confirms the breakout. And it increases the chances that there will be lower prices. We're going sideways here, and we might be double bottoming with this earlier low. And uh, to me, uh, I would be cautious in here. You know, you took half off at two times your initial risk um, with this huge tail up um, around the neighborhood of support. This is a potential double bottom. Uh, I probably would get out of the entire position here and look to short again on uh, a second signal. As far as buying this, um, for the large double bottom, um, I probably would wait, but it's possible that the trend will resume. And that's, in fact, what it did. Uh, however, what took place up here? Uh, a test of the prior high, so a potential double top, right? Um, but look what else happened. We have a bull trend, a break below the trend line, a very strong break below the trend line, and a break below the moving average. So you have to suspect that there might be a lot of sellers at the new high, right? So it's a higher high major trend reversal. Not only that, look what happened here. We have a high, a higher high, and a higher high. We have a low and a lower low. So three pushes up. This is an expanding triangle. And every expanding triangle top is a major trend reversal and um, usually uh, a reasonable short. A weak signal bar but the context is good for a short, an expanding triangle following very strong selling pressure. This is a problem for the bears, right? Um, their initial uh, stop was above the high of the signal bar. After this strong bear bar, most bears would put their stop one tick above its high. So their actual risk was from their entry one tick below the signal bar, and it was one tick above the high. Uh, if the, that's all they had to risk to stay in the position. A lot of traders would change their profit target to two times their actual risk instead of two times their initial risk above the signal bar. Uh, they would lower their, um, or they would reduce their profit expectations. And that's exactly what took place here. We went just a, a little bit uh, below uh, two times the actual risk, and now it found a lot of buyers. So you had bears 
buying back their shorts, and you probably had a um, a lot of bulls buying as well. So at this point, I think the picture is unclear. This could be a pullback from the breakout above this high. It could be a uh, a pullback from this bear breakout uh, below this um, leg up. Don't know yet. So it's a confusing picture. Probably a trading range. Still an okay swing short with a stop above that bar. You know, you took half off over here. If it gets above that high, you'll still end up with a profitable trade. The bulls, they'll buy this as a breakout pullback buy, hoping for an upside breakout, and they'll want to go for a risk, a reward equal to twice their risk. The risk is below the signal bar. Their entry price is here, so the risk is from here to here. And since it's a low probability trade, they need twice their risk to um, be an adequate profit to offset the low probability of buying at the top of a trading range. So if you take this buy, you have to go for a reward twice your risk. Uh, to me, I think it's still on this uh, major trend reversal short with a stop above the high of that strong bear bar. Now the trend is resuming down. You could short below this bear bar as a pullback from the initial uh, bear breakout, and it looks like we're probably in a, uh, a bear trend. Even though the signal bar has a big tail, it has a pretty good-sized body, and the context is good for 10 bars, two legs sideways to down. A high two buy, two legs down, one, two. Um, do you get out? Um, maybe. I would rely on a stop above the lower high and hope that I get a channel, a series of lower highs and lows. Um, you could short below this bar, double top. Uh, we have a high here. We have a second high here. Yes, not the um, same, not not exactly at the same price, but functionally it's the same thing. Also, we should get two legs down after the expanding triangle top. This channel, this move down, yes, it has two legs, but it's so tight, it's probably just the first leg of a larger two-legged pattern. Bulls, they might buy this, betting on an upside breakout. To me, I would rather be short because I think we'll get a second leg down from the expanding uh, triangle top, the higher high, major trend reversal. A good signal bar for another short, stop above that high. And it trapped bulls in, turned up, and turned down. Your initial stop was above the high of this bar. Once it started to turn down, you discovered that your actual risk was only right here. Uh, you only had to have one uh, risk to one tick above the high of this bar. At the time, you did not know it, but once the trend resumed back down, you knew that if you had to stop one tick above that price, the high of this bar, you would not have been stopped out. Your entry price is here. Your actual risk was here. Two times your actual risk was here. Uh, a good location to take partial profits. Maybe even full profits since you're at the bottom of a trading range. And this is what followed. Um, we fell further, and we have a double bottom with a lot of buying pressure. You might get out here, or you could be swinging uh, some of your short, saying eh, it's still forming lower highs and lower lows. Um, so it's still reasonable to treat this as a bear trend. We have a trading range, a strong bear breakout, and a two-legged pullback. So you could short this uh, below this bear bar. You, get, you would have been filled right here. Um, looking for uh, more down. Initial stop above the high of the uh, signal bar. And your initial target would be two times your initial risk. Once we started down, traders would tighten their stop to just above the high of this bear bar. And their actual risk would be from their entry price right here to right here. And their initial target would be two times that actual risk. Okay. This leg down is mostly within a channel, and it's possible that it's only the first leg of a much larger um, two-legged pattern. This is the weekly chart of the uh, Spider ETF. This shows what took place after that um, lower high um, short over here. We had a very strong sell-off. Again, this is the weekly Spider, the SPY. And we had a, a low two short, so a potential final flag. Whenever you have um, a low two short occurring late in a bear trend, it's often the final flag, especially after a, a sell climax. And then we have another sell climax, not a very good buy. It's forcing traders to buy too high up 
in a potential trading range. There's another low two short here with a decent bear bar, so a reasonable short. A pullback from this bear breakout, so we get a pullback here from this bear breakout. So now we got three pushes up, one, two, three. You can treat this as a triangle, and it's a short here as well. And then we have another bear breakout. At this point, we have a bear trend line, a break above the bear trend line. It did not quite reach the moving average, but it's sideways for about 10 or 15 bars. So we're starting to accumulate a lot of buying pressure. Um, so this whole pattern might end up being the final flag of the bear trend. We have a final sell climax and a two bar reversal. You can say this is the first bar down, or you can say these two bars um, are the first push down and this is the reversal up. Uh, to me, this is a potential uh, final flag reversal and a reasonable buy above the high of this bar. A minimum target would be a pullback back into this um, final flag. We'll probably get at least uh, 10 bars and two legs sideways to up. And as you know, this was the low of the um, bear trend. This is the end of my module on double tops and bottoms. This is Al Brooks, and this is my price action trading course. The current module is about triangles. Here's a list of common reversal patterns, and I'm going through modules, treating each of the reversal patterns one by one, and this current module is about triangles. What is a triangle? For me, it's any sideways move with three pushes up or down. Sometimes it has both three pushes up and three pushes down. It's a type of channel. You can draw a line above and a line below. Triangles can be contracting. They can be expanding. They can be ascending. They can be descending. And if they're sloped sufficiently, traders usually call them wedges instead of triangles. Triangles are a type of uh, tight trading range, a trading range where the high to the, uh, the top to the bottom of the range is very tight, and there are multiple reversals in it. And like all trading ranges, a triangle is a magnet, so they're very often final flags. In other words, the breakout usually fails within five or ten bars. The breakout in either direction, the market usually comes back to test the triangle, and uh, sometimes um, even reverses. Slightly a great, um, greater probability of uh, a width trend breakout. So if you have a triangle and a bull trend, um, a triangle is a pretty neutral pattern, a breakout mode pattern, but slightly greater chance of it having a bull breakout. But like I said right here, um, it can end up being the final flag of the bull trend and come back into the bull trend, come back into the triangle and continue down further, leading to a reversal. Again, any trading range, such as a triangle, is a magnet, so breakouts usually fail and come back to test the trading range, and they're often the final flag of trends. Triangles can be big, they can be small. They can be as small as two inside bars, an II pattern, um, an III pattern. Both of those should be thought of as triangles, and if you look on a small enough time frame chart, you'll usually discover that they are small triangles. Okay, as soon as you see three pushes up or down, it's a triangle. One push up, two pushes up, three pushes up, it's a triangle. And yes, it's occurring in a bull trend, but the breakout can be in either direction. Here we got a small upside breakout of the channel. Remember, a triangle is a channel, and then a reversal down. So traders will see this upside breakout, and they'll see the failure, and they'll look to short below it even though we're in a bull trend. So here we have a triangle top, a triangle acting as a reversal pattern. The market went down for about 10 bars and then came back up in a test of the triangle. Most triangle breakouts fail and come back to test the uh, triangle within about uh, 5 or 10 bars. <coughs> Again, any three push pattern is a triangle. The market went up on bar one. It went down and up on bar two, so the second push up, and then a third push up 
uh, starting with this bar and ending up here. So that's a small triangle and a potential reversal pattern. It had a downside breakout um, far enough down for at least a scalp. I probably would not short that given how strong this bull trend was. I would only look to buy. Here are three more pushes. Uh, up here, one, and then down. Up here, two, and then down. And up here, three. And three broke above the uh, top of the trend channel line. So um, it could lead to a reversal down. This is also a small lower high um, major trend reversal following a bigger uh, higher high major trend reversal. Bull trend, uh, here's a trend line. Trend line break, test of the moving average. Higher high major trend reversal, short here. And then a lower high, and the lower high came in the form of a small double top. So that's a reasonable swing short. A lot of times these small double tops look very uh, unimportant when they're coming, but if you're aware of the possibility that they are a lower high major trend reversal after a higher high major trend reversal, uh, you should take the short uh, looking for a swing down. Even if the probability is only uh, 40%, the reward is at least twice the size of the risk and that gives it a favorable trader's equation. Here we have a bear trend and then three pushes down and three pushes down means it's a triangle. There are also three pushes up so you can call it a triangle based on this third push up or um, more convincingly a better shaped triangle um, after this third push down. Did not quite reach the uh, bottom of the uh, channel uh, below and that doesn't matter it's still reversed up and um, I think it's a reasonable uh, reversal pattern uh, again bear trend trend line break lots of sideways price action so this is a higher low major trend reversal these two bottoms are basically a double bottom even though they're not perfect so this is basically a double bottom bull flag forming um, a double bottom for the higher low major trend reversal after um, well this is this is that's what it is uh, it's a higher low major trend reversal in the form of a double bottom so there's a second entry we broke out over here uh, pretty good breakout four bull bars and then we have a high two uh, pullback uh, two bar reversal uh, so a reasonable breakout pullback long betting on a channel up <coughs> again a bull trend and three pushes down and three pushes up. As soon as you see three pushes up or down, you should think of it as a triangle. Doesn't matter if it uh, has a great shape or not a great shape. Functionally, it's the same as a triangle. Uh, all triangles are tight trading ranges. This one is fairly tight and it's confusing when you're at this point in the um, day, you're saying, I don't know what's going on. This is a a confusing situation. It might break to the downside, it might break to the upside. And there are also many ways to label this. Um, there are many ways to label it to um, you know, try to highlight the existence of a triangle. Uh, you can buy the reversal up at two, you can buy the reversal up above three, uh, looking at three pushes down, one, two, and then this bear bar third push down. So this bull bar is a buy. You could wait for the breakout and buy this bar. You can buy above the pullback from the breakout or above this pullback. <clears throat> okay, so here we have a bull trend, a strong bear spike, and a triangle. And it's confusing. Three pushes down, one, two, three, so it's a triangle. And the market's in breakout mode. It broke out here. You can buy above this bull bar. It's a reasonable bull bar. Pretty good buying pressure. Maybe we'll test the bull high. Uh, we have a breakout. And then we have this bar for a failed breakout. Traders are going to look at this breakout, these two bull bars, and they're going to weigh it against the strength of this failure. To me, the breakout looks stronger than the signal bar for the failure, so I'm expecting the failure to fail, and I'm expecting the result to be simply a pullback from this breakout and a buy signal. And here we have two sideways bars, a bull inside bar closing near its high, to me, this is simply a pullback from this breakout of the bull, uh, uh, for, for the bull breakout of the triangle. So this is a breakout pullback buy. Market went up, formed a large higher high major trend reversal, sold off and tested back to the apex of the triangle. 
which is uh, common. Expanding triangle, I talked about them in an, in an earlier module. All of them are major trend reversals. The second, third, or fourth leg always breaks the trend line and usually tests the moving average or comes pretty close to the moving average. Even if the trend line break is not very strong, if the signal bar is good and the context makes sense, I would trade it like a major trend reversal. We have a bull trend, a push up, a second push up, a third push up. So you can view this as a major trend reversal, even though it has this very strong uh, bull breakout. This could be a biclimax. Um, so I would still treat it as a major trend reversal, a higher high major trend reversal. If you wanted to, you could wait and um, short the lower high major trend reversal. Second push down, either the second push or the uh, either the first push down or the second push down breaks the trend line and below the moving average. Here's that same chart, but labeling it in a different way. There are usually multiple ways to label it. This gray line is how I had it labeled on the other chart. You can also label it as one push up, uh, down, three, four, five, and you have a, uh, a higher high uh, major trend reversal, an expanding triangle top, looking for two legs sideways to down. And remember, the original lab labeling was this gray numbering, one, two, three, four, five. Another way to label it. <clears throat> expanding triangles often grow into larger expanding triangles. So instead of five pushes, you'll get seven pushes. So we can come down here and go up above. Okay. Um, all expanding triangles are major trend reversals. Um, this is um, obviously a major trend reversal, bull trend, trend line break, and higher high major trend reversal. But it has a problem. The break below the the bull uh, trend line is only two bars. That's usually not enough selling pressure uh, to look to short a major trend reversal. However, if you view this as an expanding triangle, one push up, two pushes up, three pushes up, a low and a lower low, that is enough to erase the lack of bear strength here and make this a reasonable short. So here the lines are drawn and you can better see the expanding triangle. So even though the break below the trend line and the moving average is only a couple of bars, given that it's an expanding triangle, it's a reasonable short. The expanding triangle is more important than the lack of selling pressure on the bear breakout below the trend line. Same chart, and expanding triangle tops are usually followed by expanding triangle uh, bull flags. So we had three pushes up, one, two, three, and two pushes down. Uh, so an expanding triangle top, and now we have an expanding triangle bull flag, and the target is a new high. Um, we have an IIII I pattern, four consecutive inside bars. This bar is inside that bar, this bar is inside that, this bar is inside that, this bar is inside that. Uh, breakout mode situation, a bull signal bar for the final bar, a reasonable buy above for a test above the top of the triangle. It's an expanding triangle bottom, right? Um, so it is a um, major trend reversal. Remember, every expanding triangle is a major trend reversal. But you look at it and say, well, where's the trend? I don't see a bear trend. Don't, don't forget that there was a bear trend here. And this entire rally was a breakout above the bear trend. And this expanding triangle uh, bull flag or expanding triangle uh, pullback, whatever you want to call it, uh, is also a higher low major trend reversal. All expanding triangle bottoms are lower low major trend reversals. Three pushes down, one, two, three, does not matter that the line is not perfect. Uh, we broke above the trend line. Uh, usually leg two or leg four will break above the trend line. Here's the trend line and break above the moving average. And then the new low forms the buy signal for the lower low major trend reversal. We have a bull body and, um, and that makes the likelihood of a successful trade higher. Um, the worse the shape, the less reliable the pattern. The closer the pattern is to an ideal shape, the more likely it will work. The less it resembles the ideal, the less likely it will influence what follows. 
bad looking patterns work no better than, pa uh, than no pattern at all. So you can call this an expanding triangle. Uh, we have five pushes, uh, five pushes, down, up, down, up, down, right? But the distance between five and three is great compared to the distance between one and three. And that usually means that whatever was taking place here has very little influence on what's taking place here. So I would not look at this as an expanding uh, triangle bottom. Okay, bad looking patterns are useless. If we reverse up here, it's not because of this expanding triangle. And that is the end of the module on triangles. I'm Al Brooks, and this is my price action trading course. This module is about head and shoulders patterns, head and shoulders tops, and head and shoulders bottoms. I'm going through a list of common reversal patterns, and I've been through all of these, and now we're at the head and shoulders patterns. Head and shoulders top, HST. Head and shoulders bottom, HSB. Those are the abbreviations that I'll use in this module. I personally don't like the terms head and shoulders tops and head and shoulders bottom. I think, I think they're meaningless because they don't describe what's going on with the price action. Um, the best ones are all major trend reversals, and when they are major trend reversals, I prefer to use the term major trend reversal. If you have a head and shoulders top, for example, the move down from the head breaks the trend line, and then the rally to the right shoulder becomes a, um, a pullback from that breakout, and therefore it's a breakout pullback short, and it's a lower high major trend reversal. That's how I tend to uh, look at major, major uh, head, and shoulder, head and shoulders patterns. So here we have a bull trend, a higher high major trend reversal, uh, another break of the trend line, and a lower high major trend reversal. You can call it a head and shoulders top. I would call it a higher high major trend reversal, followed by a lower high major trend reversal. At the bottom, uh, we have a strong bear spike. This is the weekly spider chart, by the way, and a potential head and shoulders bottom. I would view this as a bear trend, uh, trend line break, and a lower low major trend reversal with a very strong buy signal bar and a very strong bull spike, and then a higher low major trend reversal. And this higher low trend, major trend reversal has a small head and shoulders bottom, a left shoulder here, a head here, and a right shoulder here. To me, you could buy above this bear bar or better, uh, more higher probability, buy above the, that bull bar. Okay, again, head and shoulders patterns are really just major trend reversals. Um, this is not, you, you could take this short, there's a lot of buying pressure here, um, or you could wait for the break below the, this trend line. I could have drawn the trend line here and called this a higher high major trend reversal, but the trend line break was not all that strong, just four bars and not all that big. However, at this point, we've had uh, 10 or 15 sideways bars with a lot of bare bodies, much more selling pressure. I think this is a more reliable um, sell pattern. So this lower high major trend reversal is more reliable than the higher high. Uh, the head and shoulders traders see it as simply a head and shoulders top. Same thing at the bottom, trend line break, test of the moving average, pull back to a higher low major trend reversal. Most head and shoulders patterns um, are trading, well they're all trading ranges, and most trading range breakouts up or down fail. Most reversals fail, and most head and shoulders tops and most head and shoulders bottoms fail to reverse. If the market begins to reverse, it will usually fail because trends tend to continue what they've been doing, and 80% of reversal attempts will fail. It doesn't matter if the reversal attempt has a head and shoulders top or a head and shoulders bottom look to it. Chances are it'll fail. Every now and then, a head and shoulders top will fail to function as a bull flag, which most are, and instead lead to a reversal. But most head and shoulders tops are bull flags, most head and shoulders bottoms are bear flags, and every now and then they'll fail to function as a flag and lead to a reversal. So here's a head and shoulders bottom. Um, 
and most head and shoulders bottoms do not reverse the trend. And this is a perfect example. Um, it led to a trading range and then another um, low. Markets tend to have inertia and they resist change. So we're in a strong bear trend, um, you know, it, it's going to be resistant to change. And this head and shoulders bottom simply was part of a um, large trading range. It's head and shoulders top and bottom are way overused terms. Some traders see them everywhere and they trade them all the time. And if they do, they lose money. Remember, only 20% of reversals um, patterns actually lead to reversals. Most head and shoulders tops become bull flags. Most head and shoulders bottoms become bear flags. Okay, here's a 120 minute chart of the E-mini and their head and shoulders patterns all the way down, head and shoulders bottom patterns all the way down, yet the market continued down. There are head and shoulders tops all the way up, and yet the market continued up. Most head and shoulders patterns are flags, not reversal patterns. Traders who see head and shoulders tops and bottoms all over the place are looking for reversals within strong trends, and they end up missing the trends. Some traders are always looking for reversals even when the context is bad and they see head and shoulders tops and head and shoulders bottoms everywhere and they take all of those entries and they wonder why they're losing money when they're uh, selling these great head and shoulders tops and buying these great head and shoulders bottoms that all the books say are great reversal patterns. Uh, they're losing money because they're fighting the trend and most head and shoulders tops and bottoms are not reversal patterns, they're continuation patterns. Most head and shoulders tops become bull flags. So we have a head and shoulders top, and it's probably going to be a bull flag and not a reversal pattern. And that's what happened. Once it's, the bears are putting stops above lower highs, right? For a bear trend, you need lower highs and lower lows. If the market stops making lower highs, the bears will stop looking at it as a bear trend. So traders who shorted the breakout below the head and shoulders top have their stop above the right shoulder. If the market goes above the right shoulder, the bears give up. They no longer see it as a bear trend. And uh, here we have a strong breakout, uh, move above the right shoulder. Here's a pullback from the breakout and a resumption up. This is what usually happens with head and shoulders tops. They usually are bull flags and lead to a resumption of the bull trend. Every now and then one fails to lead to the resumption of the trend and the market reverses and people think of it as a reversal pattern. But I think the way head and shoulders patterns are talked about is entirely wrong. They're talked about as if they're usually reversal patterns, and they're not. They're usually continuation patterns. And like any continuation pattern, sometimes you get a reversal instead of a continuation. Okay, what happens one tick above that right shoulder? Um, the, bales, the bears failed to keep forming lower highs and lower lows. So they're giving up on their premise of a bear channel. The bulls buy expecting the resumption of a trend. And the bears buy above that right shoulder to exit their shorts because they now believe that their original assumption of a bear trend is wrong. So here's the head and shoulders top. Here's the right shoulder. Bears will get out above the shoulder. Bulls will get long above the shoulder because at this point, as soon as the market gets above the shoulder, the market's no longer forming lower highs and lower lows, so it's no longer a bear trend. So the bears sold betting on a bear trend, and as soon as we get above that lower high, it's no longer a bear trend. So the bears buy back their shorts and take the loss. Bulls see the same process, and they assume that the bull trend is reversing, that the bears failed. So they're buying here, and they're certainly buying the, a higher low pullback. You can call this a small, higher low major trend reversal. We had a bear trend a bull breakout, and then a pullback to a higher low major trend reversal. When the, market, when the market reverses after head and shoulders top, it is a lower high major trend reversal, and it's better to look for major trend reversals than head and shoulders tops. The right shoulder is a pullback from the bear breakout below the bull trend line, and you can take a look at the modules on, um, head, on, on major trend reversals to get more information. 
So I see the right shoulder of a head and shoulders top as simply a lower high major trend reversal. In other words, a pullback from the bear breakout below the trend line. So we have a bull trend, a break below the bull trend line, and this is a pullback from that breakout. You can call it a head and shoulders top. I prefer to call it a lower high major trend reversal. The same at the bottom. We have a head and shoulders bottom. Um, I would not be calling this a head and shoulders bottom. I would be calling it a higher low major trend reversal. A bear trend, a breakout above the um, trend line, and then a higher low. And this is the end of the module on head and shoulders patterns. This is Al Brooks, and this is my trading course on price action. The current module has to do with rounding tops and bottoms. I'm going through a list of common reversal patterns. The current module has to do with rounding tops and bottoms. Remember, most reversal patterns fail. And a rounding top and bottom, uh, I think the, the terms are meaningless, and all of them are usually some other term, like a, some other pattern, like a major trend reversal, a triangle, and a final flag. And you can see the appropriate modules for um, how those patterns unfold and how to trade them. So we have a bull trend, and we have a... Um, Here we have a bull trend and a sideways pattern that is rounding over. And the bears would like to think of this as a rounding top. I think of this more as a uh, tight trading range. And we ended up getting a bull breakout. We have a double bottom, so I think of this as more of a double bottom bull flag than a rounding top. And um, I would probably not take this short. You can argue that there's a bull trend line and this is a higher high major trend reversal. And you probably could take that short. Um, I probably would wait for more information because it's too much of a tight trading range. Double bottom bull flag, uh, bull signal bar, uh, buying at the bottom of a trading range uh, in a bull trend. Uh, probably okay for a swing long. I would not take it for a scalp. I think the probability is not high enough. We had a bull breakout here, a bull trend bar. Every trend bar is a breakout closed well above the high of the prior bar. So this might be an attempt at the trend resuming. You could buy the close of that bar and put a stop below its low, or you can wait for another signal. Here's an IOI pattern, a bar, and then an outside bar, and a second inside bar. So it's inside, outside, inside. A bull bar closing on its high. Um, I think that's a reasonably good buy um, setup. Buy one tick above its high, place a stop one tick below its low. Let's say there's a round top but no sell signal. Um, you know, you need a break below the bull trend line and you need a strong signal bar. And if you don't have both, uh, it's better to um, wait until uh, we get them before looking to uh, short the rounded top. I would rather have it be a, um, a higher high or a lower high major trend reversal before shorting. So, for example, here, uh, we have a strong bull trend and we're forming a rounding top, but we don't have a trend line break. So um, I probably would not take this short and I would wait. Here we have a very strong bear breakout well below the bottom of the trend line. So at this point I would start looking for shorts. So we have a bear breakout um, below the trend line. I don't have the trend line drawn and well below the moving average. We have a, a wedge lower high here, one push up, two pushes up, three pushes up, a bear signal bar. I think that's an okay short. You might get out here at the bottom, double bottom bull flag. You might even buy here as a, uh, for a trading range. When the market comes up here, three pushes up, one, two, three, or simply a low two short. It's a double top. Every double top is a, a low two short. We have a very strong bear reversal bar. I think this is an excellent um, setup for a swing short. We have a lower high major trend reversal and then a double top. Remember, a lot of lower high major trend reversals have a second top to them and we have a very strong signal bar. So the context is good, a trend line break and a lower high and the lower high is in the form of a double top bear flag 
and a very strong signal bar. So I think that's a good swing short. We have a bear breakout, a trend bar, closing below the low of the prior bar. And we have a pullback, so a breakout pullback short, again closing on its low. Here we have a second sell signal, um, a low too short. You can call it a double top, the top of this bar, the top of that bar, and sell below the low of this bar for a swing down. So rather than calling this a rounded top, uh, I would not take that short. I would wait until we got the um, lower high major trend reversal, and here's the second entry. And that is the end of the module on rounding tops and bottoms.